Okay, welcome back. Still playing Okinawa from Tiny Battle Publishing. We are going through the sequence of play. We are on step three, which is air, naval, air and naval operations phase. Um, this is where the U.S. player allocates his air units to cap air base strikes and close support. Um, uh, since a Japanese player can't really do anything on the first turn as far as air and um, close support, air strikes, close support, whatever, the um, American player is going to allocate his uh, air units to close support, close air support. So I'm going to allocate this marine unit for this upcoming attack here. The one indicates that it gives a I think a, either a shift or a plus one modifier to the die roll. And since it's on its back, this indicates it's close air support um, number. On the other side, on the front side, it has a two, and this is for cap. So if I was going to allocate it just for cap, I would have it flipped over. But since I'm allocating it for close air support, it's going to be on its backside. The one, like I say, either gives it a die roll modifier or a column shift. I haven't found out which yet. And then up at the top, I've also allocated another marine air unit to support an attack against this Japanese unit here. So it will also give a modifier to combat. So with that, we will proceed next with the U.S. movement phase. Okay, we are now at step four of the sequence of play in the U.S. player's turn. I'm probably only going to play out the U.S. player's turn, just kind of give an idea of how the game mechanics work. Um, there's a few different things for the Japanese player, but they're not really, um, I'm not going to really do much with them. I'm just basically going to show how most of the major mechanics work. Anyway, this is post-movement uh, phase for the U.S. player. Let's see here. I'll just look down here real quick. I went ahead and moved um, these marine units from up here. Uh, down to here, the marine units here with the amphibious uh, vehicles captured um, the Machinato, Machi, Machinato airfield. There was nobody there, and then they had to stop because of the zones of control of the Japanese unit there. The other marine regiment just came down here to help support this unit by creating a zone of control line there. Let's see, what else did we do? Here, I brought down a couple more marine regiments that were stationed uh, to the northwest of there. Um, brought them down to support the attack here. And I also moved this, these marine units, I think marine regiment and a tank unit. Um, I think it might have already been there. I don't remember. Anyway, these units here are going to support one another in an attack on that Japanese unit. And I'm also adding artillery, which is basically counters that are off board. You can just apply them to any attack you want. The attacker can only apply one artillery unit. The defender can to a, a combat, and the defender. Uh, let me double check. Is it one artillery unit per defending unit? Let's see here. Support limitation. In each combat, the attacker cannot use more than one artillery asset per involved attacking unit. Okay, not counting U.S. tanks. So I could use no more than one unit. So I could probably have used well, I think there's a 
I'm not sure if there's two units here, but I guess there's one, two. I could probably use two air units instead of uh, one, two, three, instead of one. I'll have to go back and correct that, I think. The defender cannot use more than two artillery units per involved defending unit, not counting U.S. tanks. So I think I could uh, actually use more air units or more artillery than what I have. Okay, that's one, two, see what I was saying about these sticky counters, and let's see here, so I can use two, it looks like I could use two um, counters there, airstrike counter, or marine air units, so I think I'll do that. We will bring in... another marine air group unit since I have two marine units that are attacking yes the um, Japanese player could bring in two air, uh, artillery units of his own however there is no Japanese artillery uh, defensive or offensive fire on the first turn so that's how that's gonna play out and then up to the north. We have, I moved this Marine Division around, um, around the captured air base um, to start supporting this attack and probably to drive north to go to the uh, Northern, Okina Northern Okinawa and if I had more time, I would probably go ahead and try to take out, you know, the victory point up there. But um, since this is only a four-turn game, I probably have the time to do it and then get the units back into play again. But you'd have to use strategic movement, which basically doubles your movement allowance. And using that along roads would probably give me enough time to do it. But for this demonstration, I'm not going to worry about it. So, once again, I think I can allocate more. Did I put down another air unit here? I don't want another air unit down south. Sorry, I put an air unit instead of an artillery unit. So now I have two artillery units at the bottom down there, which you couldn't see. Up here at the top, I've got... What have I got? I hate to... I hate to use tweezers with these things, they just stick so bad. So I have one, two, three, uh, looks like four, and five. So it looks like I could use five artillery units. So let's just go ahead and use one, two, three, and I already have one on the board. Three, four, and four. Five. If I'm doing that correctly, so I had five units, one, two, three, four, plus one on the board is five. So these are all going to provide, I think they're shifts or die roll modifiers. I still haven't decided yet. Better check that out, huh? Artillery provides a what? Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Artillery provides. Uh, both sides of place. Let's see. I think they are. <clears throat> I think they're used uh, on the CRT in combat um, as they provide a positive or negative bonus to combat. Has to do with the DRMs. Okay, so with that in mind, that's pretty much how that's all going to fall together. So they got five, they have five artillery units and an air unit, and they're all going to be attacking this Japanese unit here. So that is how basically movement is just spend your movement points, move, you know, hex to hex. You have to pay an extra movement point to enter an enemy zone of control. There is no movement from enemy zone of control to enemy zone of control. Unless you are the Japanese player, 
you may spend an uh, extra movement point to infiltrate, so to speak, um, by moving through enemy zones of control. And of course, strategic movement, like I said, you just double your double your uh, movement factor, which is the white number on the far right bottom side of the counter. And you can move twice as fast, basically, uh, until you hit an enemy zone of control. So anyway, this is the end of the U.S. Movement phase, step four. We will proceed with step five, the U.S. combat phase. Probably in another video. So I think this one's run long enough. So I will catch you later, and we will be doing the U.S. combat phase. See you.